So, welcome in your summit room. The first speaker, Nicolas, will introduce you about open telemetry. Nicolas? Hi, everybody. Thanks to be here. Uh, so, I have the hardest slot, the slot after lunch. So, I will need to be interesting, witty, and a lot of other stuff. Um, this is an introduction. I'm or I was, or I don't know, a developer for a long time, so this is an introduction from the point of view of a developer. Who among you are developers? Okay, so either you leave the room now, <laughs> which is fine, or you can point the presentation to your uh, developer colleagues so that can help you uh, do your job better. Both are acceptable. If you want to leave, that's not an issue. Uh, so as I mentioned, I've been a developer for a long time, mainly on the Java platform, well, on the TVM. For a long time I was Java, then I switched to Kotlin, and now I'm trying to learn Rust, um, and I'm a developer advocate. So, I'm quite, let's say, experienced, and not old. Uh, so when I was first introduced to monitoring, that was this kind of stuff. Like you had a bunch of people. Where is it? Where is it? Yes, a bunch of people looking at the huge screens on the wall. Who has known such dashboards? Uh, yeah, okay. So lots of also old people. And I was introduced to them and say, "Yeah, look, this is the biggest one in France." And wow, that was amazing. And they were like a bunch of people looking at the big screen at the old screen. So that was monitoring in the good old days. And basically sometimes there was kind of alerting if, if it was more modern, but yeah, it was very, very manual. And the thing is nowadays it doesn't work that well anymore because it's easy to watch like a single metric, but with distributed systems, we want to make sense of the whole application and the application is distributed. So, well, not that great. So I assume since lots of you are ops, you know about observability. So this is the definition from Wikipedia, which I won't repeat because it's a pretty good one. And then again, probably you know about the three pillars, the metrics, the logging, the tracing. So my point is focused on tracing because metrics, well, we have been doing that for ages. It's quite easy to get the metrics from one system especially if it's like technical metrics, such as CPU usage, memory, whatever. It's a bit harder to get metrics that make sense of the business. You need to like have like the application, do it, but it's not that a game changer. Logging, well, once you know how to log on the system and you know how to scrape those logs from multiple machines and you send them to a centralized logging system, well, also quite, quite easy. Um, so I believe the, the, the two first bullet points, they are covered. I mean, who doesn't cover them already? Yeah, that's what, nobody, yeah. Uh, I think the hardest part is the tracing. And the tracing, again, the Wikipedia uh, definition is, well, this one, I, I don't like it so much. So I, I leave you a couple of seconds to read it because they talk about logging and whatever and oh, well so I prefer my own definition which probably has been uh, like influenced by lots of people um, and for me the tracing the distributed tracing is the way like to see the path of a business request across multiple components in your distributed architecture and that's not that easy Actually, it, it's not that easy, but it's not that young anymore. There have been pioneers in the past. Perhaps you are already uh, using one or couple of them. But yeah, they were like individual initiatives. And it's good, but if you want to have probably a standard so that you can easily change from provider to provider, or that every software you are using use the same a set of interfaces. And so there is such a standard now. It's called the 
W3C Tress contact specification. So again, nice definition, blah, blah, blah. And the idea is, now it's, it's a standard hmm? with the XKCD comic just afterwards. Like there are 14 <laughs> standards, now there are 15 standards. But actually, it's a W3C, so I believe it has much more future. And the ID is like pretty basic. You have the trace, which basically like goes from the beginning of your business request to the end of your business request. And in each component, there is a span or multiple spans. And this is even better huh? with a diagram. So basically you have a trace here which spans multiple components. <coughs> and the idea is you have the parent span and you have children span. So every span but the first is bound to a parent-child relationship to another span. And so here you have the timeline and here is how long it takes and here you can see <coughs> here we call this component, this component called this component and in parallel it's called this component. And of course, this is a very simple example, but it can be much, much more involved. And in general, if you have this kind of stuff, you don't need distributed tracing. You need distributed tracing when it's much, much more complicated. And this is good, but probably it's not enough, because if you need to do that on your own, well, you will need to scrap the, he the, the HTTP header and to propagate it. So we want something that we don't need to think about. We don't want to like spend development effort on that. Um, I don't remember the name of uh, the speaker this morning in the auditorium, but he told you, the idea is we need developers to focus on, on business features. We don't want them to write like technical features that should be handled by libraries, tools, whatever. Rejoice. There is something for it, and it's open telemetry. I believe everybody has heard about it, open telemetry. Who has heard about open telemetry before? Okay, great. Um, so, open telemetry is great because it gives you not only the specification or whatever, it gives you a set of tools of SDKs or APIs, libraries, so that you can focus on your business and not develop your own. So basically, the good thing about OpenTelemetry is that it implements the trace context specification. So n it does more than that, but it implements it. So we can start with a very basic stuff. Sorry. The, 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 the trace and span and relationship between the two, and it should be handled for us. So if you, if you uh, have been uh, already using open tracing, for example, it's the merge of open tracing and open census, which is rare enough to be not noted because in general, well, people are competing and then they decided to merge the project, which is pretty smart, pretty wise and good for the community. Nowadays, it's a CNCF project. It's Abashi V2 license and it has a lot of followers on GitHub. <coughs> So the, 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 the architecture is pretty simple. You've got components, and then they talk with the open telemetry protocol to a collector. So basically, Kelly, you dump everything into a collector. It can be anything. Again, with the traces and spans and whatever. What happens afterwards, what happens after the hotel collector is not the problem of open telemetry. So you need to have a dedicated tool to read the data from the open telemetry collector. The good thing is most of the tools that I talked about, they already do that. Jaeger and Zipkin provide collectors that allow you to send open telemetry data in the open telemetry format and then they can exploit it. So if you're already using Zipkin or Jaeger, it's very low effort to move to open telemetry. 
So how do you do it? Finally, now we have uh, passed the introduction so that everybody is on the same page. Well, there are two ways to do that. As I mentioned, it's the developer-oriented uh, talk. So there are two kind of like programming languages. The programming languages that use a runtime and programming languages that compile to binary. So first is, of course, Java, Python, whatever, you have a runtime. And then Rust, I don't know if Go is among the second, probably. Even though there is garbage collector, there is no runtime. So the second runtime, well, uh, the second uh, category, there is no runtime, so it's not easy to do, or not possible to do no auto instrumentation. Um, so the idea is, if you want to start with open telemetry, if you want to start with distributed tracing, it should be as um, cheap as possible. So you should go for the low hanging fruit. And in that case, auto instrumentation is very easy to do. So my example is the following. So it's a bit more involved than Hello World, uh, because I want to have a nice distributed trace. So I have an API, so I have a user asking for products, so this is an e-commerce mockup, and of course my first entry point should be a reverse proxy or an API gateway, so I shouldn't expose my API directly. So the API gateway in that case will forward it to products, then the catalog is the one who will return the product, but it depends on two services. It depends on the pricing service, because I also want to show the price to the user, and I so also want to show only products that are available, so I want to show the stock to the user. So it's a bit better than Hello World, it's not as complicated, but it makes for a nice demo. For the record, um, as I mentioned, the most important part is the entry point, because it's the one that generates the first span, the one that has no parent span. So I work on the Apache API 6 project, like seen on my t-shirt. It's an Apache project handled by uh, like the <coughs> Apache Foundation. It's built on the shoulder of Giant, so Nginx, which is a very solid reverse proxy. Then we have OpenResty, which is a Lua engine on top of Nginx. And then we've got bunches of plugins that are like provided out of the box. So let's start. <coughs> there I will show code, because I think that the truth is in the code. Here, this is my architecture that I shown you previously. I'm using, uh, is it big enough for everybody to see? I've warned you multiple times. Okay, that's good. You are young or you have glasses. <laughs> um, so this is my architecture, as I mentioned, I, I'm using Jaeger. Um, I'm not a Jaeger fan, it's just that for me, which uh, is good, I'm very lazy, they provide everything. So I have the hotel, hotel collector, I have the web app, I have whatever is necessary, I just want have one single image, I don't need to, to handle this part. So this works. I need to tell it that, well, it accepts uh, stuff in open telemetry uh, format. Then I have Apache API 6. Uh, Apache API 6 has two modes. It might rely on etcd to store its configuration. Here I have static YAML files, which are good if you want to do GitOps. So both are possible. Here I'm using the GitOps way. Then I have the catalog. I will show you afterwards the codes. Then we can discuss which part you might be more interested in. I have as I mentioned, free microservices catalog. It's a GVM-based application in Kotlin. I have the pricing, which is a Python application with Flask. And I have, finally, stock, which is a Rust application. So depending on who you are, who, what are you interested in, we can delve a bit into one of them, or two. Uh, so here I have the catalog. I have a couple of like environment variables. So as you can see, I don't care about the metrics, about the logs. This is focused on tracing. Then I have the pricing. And interestingly enough, you can see that the environment variable are very similar, uh, if not exactly the same. 
That's because I'm using auto instrumentation. So I'm using the libraries that are provided for me and the stock as well. So even if it's not auto instrumentation, I'm using the libraries and all the libraries that are provided by open telemetry. They are configured in the exact same way from an ops point of view, which is good for you. Huh? It makes your life much easier. You don't care if you, if the developers are using libraries for open telemetry, you don't care which technology, you will always configure them in the same way. So who wants to see a bit of the API gateway? Okay. Okay. So quite easy. Here I have the routes. So the API gateway here, just like forward to the, um, to the endpoints, to the upstreams. So the first one forwards to the catalog because it's a product. And you see here something interesting. I have also another route as you can, act, uh, to, you can access the pricing directly from the API gateway. And we will see why we are doing that in the tracing. Then I have a global rule and I'm saying, hey, I will have the open telemetry plugin on every route. This is a global route. You can add plugins to every route separately, but some routes you want to like all of them. For example, if you are like monitoring with Prometheus, you want not to add the Prometheus plugin to every route. You want to be the default. So this is the idea of a global rule. Here I am sampling everything. So I take everything in real production usage, probably you want to take a sample, otherwise your data will just be too, too big. Then I have additional attributes that I want to add to the span. So here I will have the root ID, I will have the request method, and I can pass like arbitrary headers. Here I will add this header. Okay, so we can do some kind of request already. Here. Normally I should, I over already started the Docker <coughs> stuff, the Docker Compose, because sometimes it doesn't work that well. And of course, if it's a demo, it makes me like not so comfortable. OT key, and I will say hello, CFG, MGMT, camp. And it should work like this, yes, and now, we can go on this port, and now you can see my email, which is not a good idea. And I will go on here at the root. I can find the traces, and here this is the trace that I just did. Yeah, 2 p.m. And we can see. Uh, is it big enough? Uh, it's hard for me to make it bigger. Here is the best I can do. Is it okay? Okay. Great. So now you can see in not so complicated, but not so simple scenario, how it works. So we start with the Apache uh, API 6 gateway. And here we have additional data. So as I mentioned, you have the request method that I added because I configure it. You have the root ID that I added because I configure it. And here you have the header that I passed when I called it. So depending on what you want to watch, to monitor, then you can like add more or less attributes. The other one are like the default ones. Then you have data from the processor, whatever. And we can see, we can continue. So when you call API 6 afterwards, so here you can see that after a certain time, it passes the stuff to the catalog and it calls the slash product and catalog here we can see that eh, it's not that nice so the reason for that is because my application the catalog application is a kotlin application and when kotlin compiles to bytecode it doesn't look that great okay it's not that bad but not that great who here is a java developer or a gvm developer okay couple so perhaps it might be interesting um so i'm using Spring Boot, as I mentioned, I'm using Kotlin and I'm using like reactive kind of programming. And because I'm very bad at reactive programming, I just want the good part. So in the, um, in the Kotlin world, there is something called coroutines. 
So here, instead of having those mono or those future or those, all those crap, I'm just adding these additional keywords and at compile time there is some black magic. It creates a state machine and it handles that for me. So normally here, uh, when I'm, I'm, I'm doing here, I'm, the, I'm fetching the product details, uh, I am calling the pricing endpoint, I'm calling the stock endpoint, you can see that I'm doing that in parallel. I should be doing that in parallel. So we can also check that effectively this is done in parallel. We can check that uh, the pricing and the stocks are done in parallel, yes. So here we can see here and here they are in parallel, which is good. So you can also check with distributed tracing that your developers didn't think they would write like, like parallel stuff, but in fact it's serial. So you can also check the model is right. Okay? Um, and the only thing here that I did, here you can see there is no coupling on open telemetry at all. So if I do like open, yeah, this is open, I will check telemetry, nothing, hotel, nothing. The only thing that I had to do, and because I have the power of the GVM runtime, is when I create my Docker image, I just copy the agent from OpenTelemetry. So if you know about the GVM, the GVM allows you to do some kind of black magic and runtime, or also at compile time, but here it's at runtime, so you can intercept the calls and do something. Hmm? The aspect oriented programming. So this is aspect oriented programming at runtime. So I, I did do nothing, I just added the agent and when I run the stuff, I set the agent. And out of the box, without any further ado, I get this stuff, this catalog stuff. <coughs> so of course I have, like as for the API gateway, I have additional data. You can probably add more, but I did do nothing and I already have it, which is not that bad. As I mentioned, because it's, um, it's Kotlin, then the bytecode is not exactly the same as the signature of the method. There, is, there, there are additional methods that are created. Um, so you have this uh, dollar stuff, which is not that great, but it is as it is. Then uh, you can see here that I, I make a call, uh, I, I make an HTTP call, which is also traced. So on the calling side from my catalog, and I've got the call on the stock side. This is already, and, and there is a correlation. So you, you can see how it works. And then as I mentioned, from the catalog, I call the stock service directly, but here, that's something might, that might have been a misconfiguration or not. Here I did it on purpose. I go to the API gateway back to call the pricing. You might want to do that on purpose to have additional authentication, to have security, to, it's up to you. But here, the, 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 the diagram that I showed you here, well, you didn't see it. So if you want to make sure about the flow of your request, even if you are not doing very complex stuff, it might be a good idea to have some sampling of this distributed tracing to see Okay, this is what I have in my mind what happens, and this is what really happens. So even for non-debugging purpose, just for like making sure that it works as expected, distributed tracing is a good idea. Next one, the Python application. Python developers here? Okay, yeah, there are not many developers though, of course. Here, this, I added the, um, sorry, I added the uh, open telemetry libraries, but in the application itself, I don't use them. Again, I'm doing auto instrumentation because I'm super lazy. I want the low hanging fruits. So just as for the GVM, here, of course, it's not a Java agent. I will be instrumenting the stuff through open telemetry. 
But my developers, they are oblivious about it. They don't need to know it. That's very easy. And last but not least, the Rust. Who is the Rust developer? Please don't judge me too harshly, <laughs> because I'm not a Rust developer. I'm not a <coughs> Python developer either, but uh, at least I, I I I know it. So here, what I did is um, I will be very very straightforward. I copy pasted it, uh, because copy pasting development always works. And here I have no runtime, so I need to understand how, what what my application is all about. I'm using the XM framework. XM Framework is uh, using Tokyo underneath and hello. And um, here I added those two like functions that I copy pasted in my other file. And basically here I, I didn't try to understand everything. What happens here is they are initializing um, the um, open telemetry and at every request that I'm making, they are like sending the data. Also, I added this like graceful shutdown. And so, well, for not a lot of trouble, I have this. So this is the auto instrumentation. Again, low hanging fruit, low effort, great benefits. Now we can go a bit better. We can have like explicit calls. So what I will do is I will like go and do my git magic and we wait a bit till it start. I, I will wait it until it stop. I will start the new one and I will up and sometimes it takes a long time or even it freezes. So in, in the meantime, I can explain to you the rest. So. On the Java side of things, now I have added the open telemetry instrumentation library because now I have I am coupled. So if it's not enough, then you can go further. What I did, there is an API, sorry, there is an API, but what I did is because a lot of stuff in Spring Boot is related to annotations because the, it's already part of the framework that it works for the proxies. Then I just added the annotations. And the annotations means, hey, here you will actually start a span. And this span will be named li like accordingly. So here I'm adding a couple of spans and I can add additional attributes also through annotations. Here I had to cheat a bit because I'm, I'm using annotations on parameters. So here I pass the product and I would like to get the product ID so that it fits into the span. But I don't pass it, so I need to add an additional attribute. And here you can see that it's actually the ID of the product and I don't use it afterwards. It's just for Tracing purpose. So now you see, you see that my open telemetry usage is linking is leaking into my my code. So I need to change the signature a bit. So it's pros and cons. Hmm? Do you want to see the data? Well, you need to change your design a bit. Uh, does it? Did it start? No. Haha! <laughs> it will be very fun. Um, okay. Um, so this is on this side. Then on the side of the, the Python application. Uh, now I'm importing the trace, so I need to initialize the trace, and then inside the code, I can have this kind of like pattern. So I say, hey, okay, I will need to write this into my span. So I will write a new span. So on the Spring Boot side, I have an annotation. So it's declarative. Here I have an explicit API call. <coughs> depends on you you can also do that from java but the initialization of uh, the open telemetry singleton is quite not funny and it's handled for me by uh, the annotations part so i didn't want to do it uh, uh oh i will try to do one trick 
Docker Compose Stop Catalog. If anybody has any idea why the GVM doesn't start very well on Docker Compose, I will be very happy to hear your advices because every time I have issue, I don't know which one I should start and so it's stuck there, I have no clue why. Okay, and on, on the Rust side, I didn't do anything because I was already using explicit instrumentation. So since it doesn't start, I need to uh, like fall back to my slides. I'm sorry for that. So on the API 6 side, I already shown you. So here, this is the new result. Is it big enough? It's not big enough for me. <laughs> so here you can see that I have this uh, like fetch that I've added. So this is what I, I configured. And here you have the product ID that I also configured for the annotation. So if you want to follow to have more finer grained information, then that's a pretty good way to do it. And on the Python side, now my pricing service displays the SQL stuff that I wrote. Oh, well, that's what I wrote myself, so it's not big magic, but uh, you can copy paste your stuff to know, hey, this is what you are doing. And again, here, I pass the product ID, so you can trace it as well. Yes, it started. I'm so happy. Okay, um, so now I can uh, curl again. Yes. And because uh, the GVM starts now, it's taking a bit of time, but of course I have the result. So we get back on here. I prefer to be like this. We can find the traces. And here you can see that I didn't lie to you. I have the fetch stuff. So this is what I shown uh, what I shown in my slides. And here you have the ID. So the fetch one is the new one. This one introduced by this. Sorry, catalog app. Here. And here you have the product and the products. You can also check for one product. And on the Python side, again, I didn't lie to you. So here, this is Flask, the auto instrumentation by Flask, and here is the explicit span. And well, I think I'm done, unless you have questions. So you can uh, follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Mastodon because so far, I don't know. Uh, more importantly, everything is on GitHub. So if you uh, thought that I lied to you, that I cheated you, you can check by yourself. Um, and uh, if I got you interested in Apache API 6, I will be happy uh, if you check the website. Do you have any questions? Yes. So if I would like to propagate a trace, from one side of a queue, a Docker queue, to another side, would I not have to add the data to my to my uh, uh, to the span? So the question is, uh, what I've shown is all web based, and it seems to be very easy and whatever. And how do it work with Kafka? So I wanted to add that to the demo, but I had no clue where to put the Kafka queue. I know there is uh, there are libraries that do it, basically. When you send stuff to Kafka, you add additional attributes. When you read from Kafka, you read the additional attribute and you continue to propagate it. I cannot you point directly to what library, depends on the language, whatever. Uh, but I know that there are like libraries that do it and it's, they, they should work. Um, but you cannot correlate from the data. Because I, I noticed you add the data to the span. You can add data to the span, yes. You can add any data. Like, for example, uh, the, the number of transaction ID or something? Yes. Is they correlate on the other side? No, what you correlate, basically, is the... The, the, the basic of the, the stuff is the span 
as a parent span. So basically, when you, you generate every, every component, will generate a new span ID and will get the parent span ID. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have this nice, um, like, how it's called, like diagram, where you show, where you sh yeah. in Kafka, it would be the same. You would like send the span ID, and then when you read it, you will use it as the parent ID and generate a new span. But it's a good question. I had the same issue, but it seems it's possible. Again, I didn't try it, but depending on your stack, you might find what you want. Other questions? I'm a bit afraid. In general, when there is one question, there are more questions. Was it the wrong audience? Yes? Is there any comments here? So the question is, whether there is performance, it's of course it will impact your performance, just like any monitoring will impact your performance. Uh, the question that I would like to ask you is, how much are you prepared to pay in additional hardware to compensate for the performance hits in regards to the possible Mondays or weekdays that we are willing to pay randomly when there is a problem and you need to find where the problem happened. Uh, I, I, as I mentioned, I was, I was a, a Java developer and I used Spring Boot a lot and at some time Spring Boot added the actuator. Actuator was a way to add like monitoring endpoints, health endpoints, whatever, directly to a Spring Boot app without you writing anything. It was like crazy because before, when you went to the business saying, hey, we need to monitor the application, well, you have no budget, interestingly enough, <coughs> because it's an IT problem, right? It's not our problem. So I was very happy uh, and I made a couple of, of talks and I had the same, and, and the, the same kind of questions, like, oh, how much does it slow down your performance? I think it, it's not even an issue. Like, you, I had, had just one gig of, of, of memory or, I don't know how many CPUs more. It's it's not expensive. Nowadays, the hardware is not that expensive. What is expensive is you and your expertise. So, if I want to uh, to be a bit, uh, like I say, French, I would say it's better to be to 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 slow down a bit and to know where you are driving than to be very very fast and and hit the wall. Huh? But I, I won't do that. It's, it's a widespread question that I always have, but yeah, in my opinion, it's not, you, you shouldn't think like this. And if you're really, really interested, because perhaps you want to convince your management that, hey, it's less expensive, then you, you, you can do the, um, the, the measurement by yourself and see how much it costs. Which I believe everybody should do, like, yeah, let's talk facts. Other questions? Okay, so thanks a lot. Thank you.